the very first thing I will mention, you know, looking into solving equations, you know, let me go to the next page. So solving simple equations. When we say equation, it means there are two sides that are equal, equal. So one is not greater than the other. So if we do anything to one side and it looks like it's no longer equal, you know, like if I have two balls, two balls on the left side, and I have also two balls on the right side, then I can say they're equal. Is that clear? Yeah. Then if I have the same two balls, two B for two balls, and I had maybe, you know, two balls on both sides, and I, I now had another ball, one ball to this side, and I didn't add to the other side, then it's no longer equal. So it will only be equal if by the time I added one more ball to the left side, then I had another one ball to the right side, then it's still equal. So I can say three balls equal to three balls, right? Yeah. Good. So now you see that it is ball and ball being added together to give us the three balls and they're equal. But that's not where we're going. Let's look at this and try to uh, solve the question. Try to solve question number one. So for question number one, it says 3m plus 2m minus 5 equal to 20. So it means that m is a number such that everything on the left side must give me 20. Okay? Okay, so what value of M can that be? If I put one, this will be three times one and this will be two times one for M. So three times one is three, two times one is two, two plus three gives me five, five minus five is zero, so it's not equal to 20. So M can never be one, okay? Okay. If I put 2 for M on both sides, 2 times 3 is 6. 2 times 2 is 4. So two, 6 plus 4 is 10. 10 minus 5 is 5. So it's never 20. So M cannot be 2. Okay? Okay. Well, let, let's assume I put 3 for M in, on both sides. 3 times 3 is 9. 2 times 3 is 6. 9 plus 6 is 15, okay? 15 minus the 5 here cannot give me 20. 15 minus 5 is 10. Again, M cannot be 3. Is that clear? Okay. Let me try 4. What is 3 times 4? That's 12. What is 2 times 4? That is 8. 8 plus 4 is 20. And 20 minus 5 is 15. It is not 20. So definitely, M cannot be 4, okay? okay? Now, let me try 5. 5 and 5 for M on both cases. Uh, 3 times 5 is 15, and 2 times 5 is 10. What is 10 plus 15? That's 25. Now, 25 minus 5, does it give me 20? No. 25 minus 5, 25 minus 5, does it give me 20? Yeah. Yeah, so M can be 5, yes or no? Yeah. Do you understand this? Yeah. Now, but this is not the way you're going to be, you know, following all of the time, no. You can just add M and M together, like just take 3M to be like 3 mats and 2 mats. That give us, gives us how many mats? 3 mats, you know, like a mat you can sit on. 3 mats and 2 mats give us how many mats? 5 mats. Very good. So 
That means 3m plus 2m is 5m. Then minus 5 is going to give me 20. Okay, since there is a negative 5 there, I can add 5 to both sides. That is the opposite of minus 5, okay? Okay. If I want to add 5 on both sides, I'm going to say this side plus 5 and this other side plus 5, okay? Okay. So, but I'm not going to write it there, so let me just bring it back to the bottom so I can write it. So, 5m minus 5 on one side, then 20 on the other side. Then I want to introduce negative 5, I mean plus 5, okay? Plus 5, okay. because it was minus that was there. So negative 5 is going to cancel positive 5. Then I have only 5m left. Then what is 20 plus 5? 25. 25, good. Then 5 times something, 5 times something is 25. That is 5. So 5 times 5 is 25. Or you say divide by 5 because it's 5 beside the M. Okay? Okay. Divide by what? 5. Because that's the number. So we can say 5M, you know, 25. And both of them divided by 5. So 5 and 5. Beside the hem, 5 is going to divide 5, remaining only hem. And 25 divided by 5 gives us 5. So m is 5. You can see that the time we were trying to guess what the value of m should be, we were able to guess it to be 5, yes or no? Yes. But we cannot always guess. That's why there is a method to use. The method is to add the like terms together. So the M and the M are like terms. I added them to give me 5M. Then there is a negative 5 there. I have to take it to the other side to become positive 5, okay? Okay. Then I added it. It gave me 25. Then I have to divide by the number attached to M. So that's why I divided by 5. Then 5 cancel 5 on the side of M, remaining only M. And 5 divided the 25 to give us 5. Okay, let's look at the second one, number 2. Question 2 says 0 0.8 hey, number 2, 0 0.8 hey, plus 0 0.3 hey, Yeah. So can you hear me now? Good. So 0 0.8 hey plus 0 0.2, I mean 0 0.3 hey minus 0 0.5 equal to 1.7. Okay. If you see this, you will discover it's the same thing with what we did above, but different number and different alphabets, you know. We have a letter plus another letter, like 0 0.8 of this and 0 0.3 of this. So, we can add them together. What is 0 0.8 plus 0 0.3? That should be 1.1, 1 .1, okay? Okay. Then minus 0 0.5 equal to 1.7. Again, you can see a negative there, which is negative 0 0.5. We're going to move it out to the other side, and it will become positive sign. Okay? Okay. So we have 1.1a equal to 1.7 plus 0 0.5. Because it was negative, if it was positive, it's going to become negative. But now it was negative, then it becomes positive. Okay. Having done that, we can add the 1.5 and 0 0.5 together. One, I mean 1.7 and 0 0.5. So if we're adding that, what do we have? 1.7, 0 0.5. This is 12. You pick one, and this is two. This is 2.2. .2. Is that clear? Okay. So that means we have 2.2. .2. 
So 1.1a equal to 2.2. The number beside a this time around is 1.1. So divide both sides by 1.1, 1.1. Then 1.1 cancel 1.1. We have a equal to 2.2 divided by 1.1 is like saying 22 divided by 11, okay? Okay. And that's 2. So, do you understand this? Yeah. Very good. Then number 3, we have 6 plus 2a plus 5 equal 9. 6 plus 2a plus 5 equal 9. So this is number three. Looking at this number three, you can see only one of them has A. So let it remain, which is 2A. Then all of the other numbers, the two of them, both of them should go and join nine, okay? okay. As they are going, they were positive. They're gonna become negative. So minus five and minus six. Let me see. Minus five, then minus six. So 2a equal to, what is 9 minus 5? What is 9 minus 5? Oh, and 4. 4, then minus 6. So 4 minus 6, the answer should be negative because the negative carries the weight. So positive 4 cancel negative 4, we have negative 2 remaining, okay? Okay. Then you divide both sides by 2, that's beside A, so A can be alone. So 2 cancel 2, we have A equal to negative 1. 2 divided by 2 is 1, but there's a negative sign there, and this is the answer. Okay, let's look at number 4. 30 equal to 5Y minus 3Y plus 8. 30 equal to 5y minus 3y plus 8. So what we are trying to do here is to find y. And to find y, you can move the number 8 to go and meet 30. It will become negative 8 because it was positive 8. So 30, now hold on, 30 minus 8 equal to 5y minus 3y. Oh, this is number 4. So, oh, no, I don't need those equal sign there. Now, since we have this, what is 30 minus 8? That should be 22, right? Okay. Then what is 5y minus 3y? Like 5 yogurt you know five uh maybe two y yeah two y uh, five yo yo minus three yo yo that's a two yo -yo. so two y now this time around we have two y equal to 22 so what are we going to use to divide both sides now mm -hmm. you know we're looking for y and there's a number beside y. We're going to use that number. What number is that? Y. I mean, 2 beside two. y, okay? Yeah. So once you have 2 there, 2 cancel out 2. Then we have y remaining. So 22 over 2 is 11, okay? Okay. All right, number 5. 12 plus 0.6d plus 8 equal to 20. Number 5. 12 plus 0.6d plus 8 equal to 20. 0.6d is should be alone because it's the only alphabet there. So 0.6d. Then all other numbers, the two other numbers, you go and meet 20 at the other side. 
they were positive, they will become negative. So minus 20 and minus 8. Oh, I said minus 20 is 12, not 20. So minus 12 and minus 8. So 0 0.6d equal to 20 minus 8 is 12, right? Yeah. And 12 minus 12 is 0. So all of this give me 0. So that means d must be 0. Because when you multiply a number by something and you get 0, then that something must be 0. Okay? Yeah. So it's only 0 0.6 times 0 that will give us 0. So d equal to 0 divided by 0 0.6 which is finally zero. No matter how you divide zero into number of places, it will always be zero. So that's number five. And it makes sense because you already have 20, 12 and eight, right? Yep. Which is already 20. So this has no value. Is that clear? Yeah. It has no value. So. And number six, question number six says, 2C plus 3C minus 8 is 22. 2C plus 3C minus 8 equal to 22. Yeah, what is 2C plus 3C? 5C. Good. So 5C minus 8 equal to 22. Then 8 is going out. It's going to be positive or negative. Will the 8 be positive or negative? Positive. Positive because it was negative. That's correct. So 5C equal to 22 plus 8. And what is 22 plus 8? Um, 29. Oh, I mean, 1. 22 plus 8 is 30. So we're going to divide both sides by what? Pardon? What are we going to do next? Um, what we're going to do? Divide both sides by something. By what? Because we're looking for C. Divide them by 8. Wait a minute. There's no 8 on this line. So divide both sides by what? Okay, let me let me give you an int. You remembered when we got 2a equal to something, we divided both sides by 2 that was beside a, right? Yeah. And when we got 1.1a, you know, we divided by the 1.1. 1 .1. When we got 2y, we divided by the one by the 2. When we got 5m at the top, we divided by the 5, right? Yeah. So now at the bottom, we have 2y. What did we have? Okay, we have five y. So what are we going to use to? I mean, five c rather. What are we going to use to divide both sides? Divide it by five. Five. That's the number beside it. Okay. Okay. So that the five can cancel this five, then you have c equal to thirty over five. What's thirty divided by five? Six. Six. That's correct. Is that clear to you? Mm. Okay. Mm. Yeah. Is it clear? Yeah. Okay, okay. Let's look at the next one. Number seven. Fifteen equals six B minus two point five B plus one. Okay. Fifteen equals six B minus two point five B plus one. Six B minus 2.5b plus 1, if I get that right. Okay. Now, we've got 15 here, and there's a positive 1. They can merge. That's number 7. They can merge and become 15 minus 1. Then there are some b's at the other end, which is 6b minus 2.5b. 
So 6 minus 2.5 is supposed to be 4.5. Okay? Okay. 4.5b. Because 6 minus 2 is 4, then 0.5. Oh, no, it's not 4.5, it's 3.5 then. 6 minus 2 should be 4, right? The way is remove uh, 0 0.5, you have 3.5, okay? Okay. So we have 3.5b. Then this is 15 minus 1, that's 14, okay? Okay. Now we have 3.5b equal to 14. What number? Which number are we going to use to divide both sides? 3.5, okay. Is that clear? Yeah. So if you are divided by 3.5, 3.5 cancel 3.5 will be this 14, you can turn it to 140 and turn the number at the bottom to 35. That means you multiply both of them by 10, okay? Okay. Then we can use 5 to cancel it out to reduce them. 5 in 14 is 2, remainder 4. 5 in 40 is 8. Then 5 in 35 is what? 7. Is that clear? Okay. Then we say 28 divided by 7 is 4. So B equal to what? Four. Is this clear to you? Yeah. Okay, the last question. I think this is 21 equal to 3 plus 2x plus 9. Uh, number 8. And the 1 equals to 3 plus 2x. I need to get that again. So 3 plus 2x plus 9. So let's see how this works. Plus 9. And I move this b downward. 3 plus 2x. So here now we're looking for x. So the x should be alone, okay? Yep. All the other numbers should go and meet 21. So 21 minus 3 minus 9 equal to 2x. So 21 minus 3 is 18. 18 minus 9 is what? 9. Okay? Okay. And that's 2x. So we can divide both sides by 2. This over 2. This over 2. 2 cancel 2. So we have x equal 9 over 2. What is 9 divided by 2? That's 4.5 or 4 and a half. <coughs> Excuse me. So is it clear to you? Yeah. Okay, I'm going to give you some time. To write them down and i'll give you something simple to track so these are the same questions on simple equations okay okay so if i look at number one it says 3x minus 20 plus 2x equal to 10. now the question you need to ask yourself does all of them contain x the answer is no okay okay so only those that contain x should be together like this 3x plus 2x okay because it's plus if it's minus i put minus then what happens to this one that doesn't contain x and this one doesn't contain x okay you understand me? So they are going to be together on the other side. 10 is already outside, but the 20 coming is negative, okay? Okay. When it get outside, become what? Positive. So what is 3x plus 2x? 5x. 5x, good. 
Then what is 10 plus 20? 30. 30. So with this, you should know what next to do. What's, what's the next thing for us to do? Need to do 30 divided by 5. Good. That's a very good one. So we divide both sides by 5. So 5 can. So 5, then we have x equal to what? Equals 6. That's equal 6. That's correct. So probably I should solve number 10 then. Mm, okay, let me solve number 10. And probably number 9, then you go ahead with the rest, okay? Okay. So for number 10, we have negative x, negative 3, positive 2x, equal to 3. Again, there are two of them that are x, okay? This and okay. this. So you bring them together, but since this is bigger than 1, then you can you know, put it at the front and put the negative x here. Then there is a 3 at the other side. So 3, then plus the 3 that is coming, okay? Okay. Because it was negative, that's why it became positive. All right? Okay. Mm -hmm. So then... You're going to have 2x minus 1x is a single x, okay? Okay. Then 3 plus 3 is 6. So we don't need to divide by anything, right? Yeah. So we can just say x is 6. Is that clear? Yeah. So let me solve number 9 then you're going to get your sister for me after that number nine. So number nine says okay, minus 16 plus x plus 3x equal to 8. Now, if you consider this very well, you will see that x and x are together. Then the negative 16 can go outside, okay? Okay. And it's going to become positive 16 when it goes to the other side. So we can say x plus 3x equal to 8 plus 16. So what is x plus 3x? That's 4x, right? Yeah. Then 8 plus 16 is what? Twenty-four. Twenty-four. So what do you think we should do next? Twenty-four. Divide four by four and divide twenty-four by four. Very good. So divide which both equals, sides. Yeah, which equals to what? Six. Good. So when we divide both sides by four, four cancel four. Then x equals six. That means you've already got But when you are doing yours, be patient with it. Consider the letters that are the same to one side, the letters that are not the same. I mean, the one that doesn't have letters at all to the other side. That is collecting like terms, then you simplify, okay? Okay. Also. So I'm going to send all this over. You can get your sister for me now. Yeah, Annabelle, how are you today? Okay, how was school today? Good. All right. Hope you were not stressed up, right? What you say? Hope you were not stressed up at school? Yeah, I was good. Okay, it was good. Fine. So you're going to give me some time. I'll put... Oh, wait. Did you do mathematics today at school? Um, we didn't have maths. You said what? Didn't have maths. Okay, you didn't have maths today. Mathematics. Did you do did you do it today? No. No. Okay. You don't know when you're going to do it, right? Hmm? Are you tired? Kind of. Oh, sorry about that. 
So I'm going to give you some time. I want to send all this over to your sister, okay? Okay. Then we're going to look at your assignment and afterwards we'll look at what we have for today. Let's see. So right now, the first question you solved says 11 over 5 and you got 2 or number 1 over 5 which is to change to mixed fraction from improper improper to mixed numbers so 11 over 5 we say how many 5 is an 11 that's 2 which is 5 times 3 is 10 then remainder 1 over 5 so it makes your work correct okay okay and number 2 we have 91 over 10 91 over 10. So the number of 10s in 91 is 9, which is 90. Then it remains 1 over 10. So again, your answer is correct. And the third one, number 3, you have 37 over 6. So how many 6 in 37? That's 6, which is 36. And when you remove 36 from 37, you have 1 over 6. And that is also correct. That makes it 3, 3. Okay? Yeah. Okay, right now, I'm going to move to uh, some other aspects of this, this work. We want to look into how to add you know, fractions together, okay? Okay. Now, how to add fractions together. So before we do anything, I'm going to do some examples for you, adding fractions. Adding fractions here. You know, we've looked into how to multiply fractions, how to reduce fractions to lowest term and so on, and how to change from improper fraction to mixed number. Now, it's adding fraction. If I give you a fraction, <coughs> you will see that we have the terms called numerator and denominator, right? Can you hear me? Yes. So we have the numerator and the denominator. So in this first one, let's say I have 3 over 5 plus 1 over 5. You know, 3 over 5 plus 1 over 5. You can see that the denominators are the same, right? Yes. So whenever you have a fraction that the denominators are the same, it's just easy as 3 plus 1 over one of the denominators, okay? It's just easy as 3 plus 1 over one of the denominators. Is that clear? Yes. Simply because the denominators are the same. And how did we come by that? It's this. We have to look for a common denominator for them, which is, since they are the same, you pick 5. Then you say, how many 5 is in 5? That's 1. Yes or no? Yes. Then 1 times 3 is what? 3. Okay. Then plus. How many 5 is in 5 again? 1. One. 1 times 1 is what? 1. Okay. Okay. So what is 3 plus 1? What is 3 plus 1? 4. 4. Over what now? Over 5. 5. And this becomes the answer. So that one is easy, but I just have to show you the method so that when we encounter the ones, 
that doesn't have the same denominator, we're going to follow the same method by finding a common denominator and trying to divide and multiply. Let's look at the second one. If you have 3 over 8 plus 2 over 8, this is just 3 plus 2. That's 5 over 8. That's the answer. Is that clear? Yes. And why? It's because they have the same denominator. Just pick one of them. 8 and 8 gives me 1. And 1 times 3 gives me 3. Okay? Okay. To the second part, 8 and 8 again, that's 1. 1 times 2 gives me 2. Then what do I have? 5 over 8. Right? Yes. But let us imagine that you have something like this number 3. You have something like... 1 over 3 plus 1 over 6. Are the denominators the same? No. Okay. Since the denominators are not the same, I have to look for a common denominator for them. And the common denominator I'm looking for is a number that is a multiple of the two numbers. So I'm going to check. The bigger number is 6. Is it a multiple of the smaller one? The answer is yes. yes. Okay. 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 Yeah. Since it's a multiple of the, number, uh, the smaller one, then you pick it. Okay. But if it's not a multiple of the smaller one, don't pick it. Is that clear? Yes. Then we're going to look at another method to use. Let us try, before we finish solving this, mm, okay, let me change the number at the top to 2 so that we can make some sense when we're doing it. Then, let's see something that is not the same, like 2 over 5 plus um, 3 over... Okay, that's a 3 over 7, okay? okay? Now, in this other case, in this case, are the denominators the same? No. So, the bigger one, is it a multiple of the smaller one? No. No, so it's not. That means we have to keep looking for the multiples of the bigger one until we reach a multiple that will be a multiple of the smaller one too. Is that clear? Yeah. So what's the next multiple of 7? That's 14, right? Yeah. Is 14 a multiple of 5? No. no. So what's the next multiple then? 21. Is it a multiple of 5? No. What's the next multiple? 28. Is it a multiple of 5? No. And what's the next multiple? 35. Is it a multiple of 5? Yes. Yeah. So that is what we're going to make use of, okay? Okay. Is, it, is this clear to you? Yes. Okay. So we're going to check those multiples of the bigger number until we reach a multiple that is as well a multiple of the smaller number, I mean smaller denominator. Is that clear? Yeah. So for 5 and 7, we agreed that 7 is not a multiple of 5. So we can use 7. But 6 on question number 3, 6 is a multiple of 3. That's why we can use 6. Okay? Okay? Good. Good. So... You can see we're trying to solve two questions at the same time so that we compare the two. So for this second one, which is number four, what is our common denominator? 35. Right? Yes. For number three, what's our common denominator? Six. Good. So we're going to say how many three... In, how many threes in six? Three. 
How many trees in six? Mm. That's two, right? Yeah. Then two times two at the top. Give me what? Four. Four. Then the second side. How many six is in six? How one. many? Yeah, that's one. So one times the one that is at the top. Give me what? One. Okay. okay. So what's the final answer to this? What's the final answer to this? Five or six. How did I get five? Um, from the four and one. Four plus one. Okay, the other side. How many fives in thirty-five? <coughs> Excuse me. So, how many five in thirty-five? Yeah. Seven. Seven. And seven times the number at the top gives me what? Two. And seven times two gives me what? Fourteen. Fourteen. So you understand how I got fourteen, right? Yes. So how many sevens in thirty-five? That should be five. So five times three at the top gives me what? Fifteen. Fifteen. So you understand where fifteen came from, right? Yes. So what is the answer to this? What is fourteen plus fifteen? That's twenty-nine. Okay. Okay. Over thirty-five. Now I'm going to explain all of this again to you. Okay. Okay. Now, let's consider the first one. 3 over 5, 1 over 5, they are the same denominator. I just pick one of them because they are just the same, okay? Okay. Then I say 5 in 5 gives me 1. 1 times the number at the top gives me 3. Then 5 in 5 again gives me 1. 1 times the number at the top gives me 1. Then I add them together to get 4 over 5. Is this clear to you? Yes. Good. To number two, they are still the same, so I just pick one of them. Eight and eight is one. One times three gives me three. Okay? Okay? Can you hear me? Yes. I said eight and eight is one. One times three gives me three. Is that clear? Yes. Then eight and eight again, one. One times two gives me what? Uh, two, right? Three. One times two give me what? Three. One times two give me what? Two. Good. So three plus two give me what? Five. So that's five over eight. Is that clear now? Yeah. Then let's go to number three. The denominators are not the same, so we have a challenge. The challenge is to check whether the bigger one is a multiple of the smaller one. We found it is, then we pick it, okay? Okay. So how many threes are in six? That's two. What is two times two? At the top, you give me four. You know where the four came from, right? Yes. Good. So the next one... 6 and 6 is 1. Then 1 times 1 gives me what? 1. So 4 plus 1 give me what? 2. 4 plus 1 give me what? 5. 5 over 6. Now look at the last one. Before I allow you to write it down, then probably I'm going to give you homework, okay? Okay. So 2 over 5 and 3 over 7. The LCM are not the same. I mean, the denominator are not the same. So we have to find a common denominator. We check the bigger number. It is not 
a multiple of the smaller one. So we kept looking for the multiple of the bigger one, okay? okay. We got to 14 because it's 7. We got to 14. It's not yet the multiple of 5. We got to 21. It's not yet a multiple of 5. We got to 28. It's not yet a multiple of 5. Then we got to 35. When it was a multiple of 5, then we stopped at 35. Is that clear? Yeah. So we now say how many 5 in 35? That's 7. 7 times 2 gives us what? 14. 14. Then how many 7 in 35? That's 5. 5 times 3 gives us what? 15. And 14 plus 15 gives us what? 29. And this is our answer. Okay. Okay, I'm going to send this over because we're going to round up now. I'm going to send this over so that you can take your time to write it down. Then you will be able to do the ones I'll give it. I'll give you as homework. Let me write the homework and let's try and see. Homework. So for the homework, you're going to add the fractions. Add. One, let's say you have two over seven plus four over seven. They are both over seven, they are the same. So then two, you have another one like three over eight plus. Say you have five over twelve. Okay. okay. And the third one. Which one are you gonna give me? You said? How many questions are you gonna give me? Just three questions. Okay. You know we have class tomorrow. So um the third one, let's say we have Again, 2 over 7 plus 9 over 14. So you're going to try this out, okay? Mm -hmm. Or instead of 9 over 14, I think I want to have 5 over 14. So 5 over 14. So I will send this note. You write out the note in your exercise book. Then you solve the, you do the homework, okay? okay? So expect it through your mom's WhatsApp, and that's what I'll be running off for today. So it's been your first day back at school, and make sure you take enough rest, okay? Okay. So I'll be bye for now. Okay. Yeah.